All right, moving on to number four. This one right here got a couple tricks up its sleeve. So let's, let's be cautious with this one a little bit. Okay, so we got <clears throat> a weather satellite is placed into circular orbit 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. 300 kilometers, nice try. So the first thing is to convert 300 um, kilometers to meters. So we get three times 10 to the fifth meters, right? And then the Earth's radius is 6,380 kilometers. Again, nice try, but we need to convert that. So here I have it in meters and its mass is all that kilograms. So that's fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to write R little R E for the radius of the earth. Okay. So this in here is the earth. This is the radius of the earth, right? And then we have, um, the height of the satellite. So the weather satellite is placed into circular orbit right 300 kilometers above the earth so we convert that and then this in here is the height of the satellite which is uh three is equal to three times 10 to the fifth meters this box here will be the satellite moving in uh, circular motion and i know i said i wasn't going to do drawings but i snuck this little one in here and it just has some formulas so you know it's relative to the problem but so because we separated or because these two values are separate which is what gets most people this value right that goes from the center of earth all the way out to the outside is big r so big r is made up of the radius of the earth and the height of the satellite above the earth's surface so the first thing to write is r is equal to little r plus the height of the satellite. So this is gonna be probably the most important thing. Sneaky little radius, okay? Now we need the gravitational force because we got the mass of the Earth and the mass of the satellite. So we got gravitational force, which is this formula. We got G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite over r squared. I'm gonna write big radius right, general form. And then we also got centripetal force because the satellite traveling in a circle is feeling acceleration going inward at every point. And so that force is mass of the satellite, velocity squared over R. Again, just big R. All right, so because these two forces um, are going on at the same time, right? The, here we got two bodies gravitationally bound and here we got uh, the force centripetal of this body on the outside. And so because of that, we set them equal to each other, All right? So we got here uh, G M E mass of the earth, mass of the satellite over R squared is equal to mass of the satellite velocity squared over R. Okay, so perfect. I'm gonna box this one up because we're gonna use this later. This is the first thing we've done, right? So we have the formulas. We pointed out this, right? We set it up from the beginning. And now we're here. This is the first thing we've set up. So F G equal to F C, gravitational centripetal. So first thing we wanna do here is calculate the velocity, right? Because I think um, we need to find the period of the satellite. But steps into finding the period means that we need to find the, the velocity. So I'm gonna cancel out the mass of the satellite, right? When I put this R up here, one of these cancel. So all I have left is G, mass of the earth over R, and then this is squared, so this is square rooted and velocity. So you might box this up and be happy, but don't make the mistake that this R is made up of these two things. So I'm actually gonna rewrite it. And I'm gonna put, this R is equal to radius of the earth plus height of the satellite, which were both given values in the beginning. So this is the proper formula to, to, to keep. Okay, so plugging in all the numbers, you have uh, the gravitation constant. We have the mass of the earth given radius of the earth is given and height of the satellite is given. So plugging all that in, 
we should get velocity of the satellite is 7,727.25 meters per second. Slow, slow movement. No, I'm just kidding, this is fast, but space terms is kind of slow. All right, so this is the velocity of the satellite orbiting, all right, so the orbital speed. All right, now let's do, let's get the period. So let's, I'm gonna put this here and cover up my drawing. And I'm sorry, we're gonna have to move you. Okay. So we got this velocity. Let's make sure we can see. We got, we got this velocity here, and now we want to try to incorporate period somewhere. So let's let's start with this one again, right? This is this was important, and so we're gonna write that again here. We're just gonna put this formula here. We got g mass of the Earth mass of the satellite over r squared is equal to mass of the satellite velocity squared over r. Okay, so uh, gravitational force equal to centripetal force. Now, um, I'm going to cancel out the mass of the satellites, right? And I'm going to rewrite this side a little bit different. This is V squared. I'm just going to put V times V. I'll put an R under one of them, right? And again, we're just going to write this mass of the Earth, mass of the... Oh, you don't exist anymore r squared right so we got r squared these two and we got I, I broke that up a little bit differently so we can take a look at something okay so now from this part here we need to know that velocity um in circular motion is equal to r omega right or we could just write v over r is angular velocity knowing that we're going to replace this right so we're going to get omega times velocity here we got the same stuff as above and then one more change so one more formula that you need to know and that is that omega is equal to 2 pi over the period it's perfect because this is what we're looking for here so we're going to replace omega with two pi over t, we still have velocity, and everything else stays the same. So this is a good place to be because we have the value of the variable that we're looking for at the end, and all these things we have already. So let's let's solve for t, all right? And you can do that however, but I like to. I'm gonna move all this stuff up here, down here, so I have. 2 pi velocity, right? Because all that comes down here times r squared, and this is 1 over t. And then I like to flip both sides. So then this is 2 pi v r squared on top. This top part is now on the bottom. And we have t. See? So here, this is perfect, right? But we need to remember this r is in disguise and is really the radius of the earth plus the height of the satellite. So let's rewrite that before we start doing anything. Two pi velocity and RE plus the height of the satellite squared. So this term here is R and that was it. That was the, the part where they try to get you at the end too. Okay, so velocity we calculated here we know two pi, we got the radius of the Earth given, the height of the satellite is given, square that. This constant is given, and the mass of the Earth is given. So you're gonna get, putting all that into the calculator, um, 5,431.6 seconds, because that's the unit that's measured in, in period. Then you get that answer, and then you worry, because it's not here. And then you calm yourself because you say, oh, all the answers are in minutes and I have mine in seconds. So let's convert that. So 5,431.6 oh, 5, seconds. And we put seconds on the bottom, minutes on top. So one minute, 60 seconds. So divide this number by 60, right? And we're gonna get 90 minutes.
and then you'll be happy again because you'll see that your answer is B. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit of, you know, a setup right here, which can make the whole problem wrong. As long as you have this front setup, everything else is pretty much straightforward. You put the um, forces equal to each other. You solve for velocity. This last part, just make sure you, you know, write out the R's, what this really, this R really means and keep it general for both. So that way you're able to do this at the end. And then here, once you're back to putting them, the forces together, now change the way you write this, right? We're gonna introduce um, omega, which is the angular velocity term. And this term is gonna introduce period, which is what they're asking for. So through here is how we're gonna navigate our way to getting this term in our equation. And finally, once you have that, solve, do some algebra, and don't forget the last part. So this R right here is gonna be RE plus um, height of the satellite. And then the final answer, don't freak out, because you have to convert that to minutes, okay? So that's it for that one.